This is a typical MIP mercury intrusion port oximeter. We have different types of port, low pressure rope port and high pressure port. More than anything, these tests require a lot of patience and these are extremely expensive tests and setups. Uh, this is a helium gas pyknometer where you have containers in which uh, you can keep the sample and you can keep them in the control system. You can allow their interaction with helium gas, you can find out what is the volume of helium that gets displaced and you can compute the bulk density and surface area. The balls which you are seeing over here are the standard materials which are used to calibrate the setup. This is the Blaine's uh, air permeability apparatus, you must have used it. Uh, this is a U-tube and in the U-tube, one part of the U-tube is connected to a pump, hand pump like the blood pressure machine and this is a sample holder. So, a known weight of the sample is compacted in the sample holder and this is attached to the Blaine's permeability apparatus and what you are seeing over here is the mercury column. So, initially the mercury is balanced. What you have to find out is that you have to find out how much time a material takes for allowance of a certain amount of air through it and that is why we call this setup as uh, Blaine's air permeability apparatus. So, truly speaking the amount of air which passes easily or not easily is converted into a specific surface area. So, no need to remember all these equations and formula because they are all given in ASTM course. We just try to understand what it is. So, if I create a sample at a given void ratio and uh, ES is the void ratio of the specific material which is being used as a standard material, ES is the standard material which is normally cement. PPC or OPC. Uh, T is the time which is taken by manometer to drop uh, when the sample is used and TS is the time uh, which is the time taken by the standard sample to drop certain amount of uh, air through it. Uh, specific surface area of cement is known. Again the question is how would you get it? So, you can use different techniques to find it out. The void ratio of the sample can be obtained and void ratio of the cement is known and uh, manometric drop for the cement is known and hence you can compute the specific surface area. Earlier people who are working in the field of uh, cement and concrete technology they used to use these devices. But now the question in your mind must be that uh, where geotechnical engineers are going to use these concepts. You must have got a hint that uh, present day practice of environmental geomechanics is how fine a material can be crushed, all right, including the fine material itself. So, imagine if I want to pulverize clays and if I want to create nano size particles out of it. So, this is a very different scale of the particle size on which you are traversing because of the added advantages. When the particle becomes extremely a small in size, a surface area increases, activity increases and so on. So, these things become excellent environmental filters, sieves and I can use them for cleaning up of uh, different types of flue gases or the sludges. So, this is where the profession is heading to. So, I might like to use this material in the soils to decontaminate them, are you realizing? So, when you read the papers, you will find a lot of research is being done and uh, this is the need of the hour. When you go from micro to nano scale, the as far as I know, like whatever understanding we have at the micro scale totally changes to at the nano scale, that nano chemistry comes in. So, for that if we are grinding it that fine, then we need to understand how we will behave at because the difference, there will be difference in behavior at the micro scale and nano scale. Correct, that is right. Your observation and statement is absolutely correct and this is a challenge which people are facing. So, bentonite uh, you know most of the bentonites can be activated for extra sensitive environmental projects. If I have to uh, stop the leakage of let us say radioactivity, then I have to make material so fine, so active that nothing passes out of 
the voids of the soils or for that matter even the concrete all this is being used you, you come from a place very close to that Indian army does all these things now you should explore thermal resistant blast resistant and uh, impact resistant structures this is what now India is doing so a lot of geotechnics is involved. And another interesting device where uh, you can check the thermal stability of the geomaterials uh, because most of the application which we have been talking about is you know materials coming in contact with elevated temperatures. So how would you make refract, uh, refractories, how would you make bricks, how would you make tiles, how would you make uh, uh, different types of uh, you know what you call them as uh, refractory materials. Have you ever seen a refractory material in ovens? Normally they, they create a layer of clay and which acts as a very good insulator but without that layer you cannot bake the chapatis or whatever, tandoors. So that is a refractory material. So when you go to the commercial level, industrial level, they, are, they cannot do clays only, then they have to use refractories and these refractories have to be tested for their thermal stability, particularly the minerals which are going to use for making these things. So you will be surprised to know that geotechnical engineers help even tile industry. So some of my projects which I did for different famous tile companies uh, were quite educative. So from there only I learned you know what minerals to be used to create a sort of a tile. So in this system uh, a quick uh, review for you. What we do is we do control heating of the sample in different environments and this environment could be let us say oxygen or it could be nitrogen. So normally the heating of the sample is done in two different types of environments which is one is where you have free supply of oxygen so that all the material which which has to get oxygenated, oxidized gets so, second is in the nitrogen so that nothing gets oxidized. And then what you observe over here is that there is a balance, micro balance attached to the sample where you can measure up to third decimal place of the milligrams also and uh, you can plot a relationship like this which shows uh, on y axis the weight loss percentage and on the x axis the temperature. So let us first uh, decipher the graph on y axis on the left hand side and the temperature on the x axis. This is what is known as uh, thermogravimetric analysis TGA. If you consider only the first two parts of the graph this one and this one what it shows is as the temperature increases, this side temperature increases x axis, percentage weight loss increases, alright. So I want to see how much a material can uh, you know uh, get rid of the moisture which is adhering on its surface, number one. Number two, what are chemical reactions which might be happening in the system and I heat it slowly. So for that there is another equipment which is known as DTA, differential thermal analysis which is done. So this is thermogravimetric analysis and differential thermal analysis. So as the temperature increases and increase in temperature is controlled that means the rate of enhancement of temperature can be fixed alright by heating at certain temperature. So depending upon the response which you get I can define a reaction as exothermic or endothermic reaction. So there are few soils or few minerals when you heat them they might become unstable, they may start showing you exothermic reactions particularly when they come in contact with water. So when you are designing different types of uh, systems of importance there you have to do all these tests alright. So just to remind you uh, what we do is we do these type of testing in dry air and in inert atmosphere like nitrogen so that we can compare the results and we can interpret uh, the presence of different type of volatile materials in the geomaterials. So suppose I want to differentiate between different type of coals, this is a very good method. See our subject has become mostly consulting oriented like where you help people, so you have to apply your grey matter in solving someone's problem. So I am sure you must realize this is becoming more of diagnostics, diagnostics of the problem, diagnostic of a material, application of a material for solving a situation or a problem. 
this is modern day uh, geotechnical engineering is. So, if you look at this uh, trend, you know, uh, what is known as differential scanning calorimetry, this is another interesting tool which is used and uh, when you talk about, when you meet my students like Bini and all these people who are talking about the phase changes which are occurring in the materials during, you know, how much heat goes in the system, how much heat comes out of the system, multi-phase geomechanics when you talk about. These type of studies become very important. Again, it shows the instability of the system. So, if you look at this graph for DSC analysis, differential scanning calorimetry, which is being used by chemical engineers quite a lot. At a given temperature, how much heat flow occurs in the material or outside the material, if I want to see this. You will observe that this metal behaves very dubious, you know, at a very small just extreme left to the given temperature the behavior is different and on the extreme right the behavior is different. It has two extreme peaks. These type of uh, materials I do not want in my team, is it not? They may, they may be very dangerous, extremely moody materials. So, I have two observations, I have two ways to eliminate these type of material, either I do not select them or if I select them, then I have to make sure that these materials will always remain exposed to a certain temperature range, because here also you will see that there is a thermal instability. So, a lot of engineering has to be done with the material, that is what the science of technology of the clay minerals is. Simple example is when you use different type of, uh, you know, uh, face packs on your face, uh, you realize very freshness, why? Because these are the minerals when you put them in water and when they are adhered on the face, they produce exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction. If the mineral produces exothermic reaction, you will be very uncomfortable. So, the minerals which are used for most of the cosmetics are the ones which give you endothermic reactions. They cool your body. Most of the talk, talk powders, they are of that type. So, this is how you can differentiate between them. The same thing is valid if I am designing a barrier system inside the ground by using a mineral and if water or contaminant comes in contact with the mineral and lot of heat gets generated, what will happen? The whole soil might get cracked, thermally cracked, it is not a good situation. So, compatibility of the material has to be checked before you use this material for any application, thermal compatibility. So, now let me start. Uh, the chemical characterization of geomaterials. To analyze the thermal properties of uh, different particles in the field, how it reacts to different yeah, temperatures. Yeah, see, uh, philosophically, only concrete technologists talk about heat of heat of hydration. Clear? Truly speaking, we should also be talking about heat of hydration because chemically, cement and soils are same. If you look at the composition, the composition is same. Only thing is the presence of certain chemicals is more in cement as compared to the soils. So, when this type of questions come in mind that suppose if I have to evaluate two, three materials and if I have to chalk out a strategy that where what type of material should be utilized and this is where we talk about the chemical characterization of geomaterials. This is an intricate subject. So, earlier we talked about XRD, if you remember, X-ray diffraction. Now, we, I am talking about X-ray fluorescence, XRF. So, XRF technique gives you the chemical composition of the material. It could be elemental analysis and the percentage oxides which are present in the material, XRF we call it. This is the unit which is used uh, for finding out the chemical composition of geomaterials rocks and sands and soils, different type of admixtures, so on, man-made geomaterials, natural materials, so on. Uh, in environmental geomechanics, we utilize extensively ICP, what is known as inductively coupled plasma. You must have studied in your 10 plus 2 physics, oh, sorry, chemistry, I am sure. So, what ICP units are? They are used for determining the level of contamination of chemicals present in the 
solution of any geomaterial. So, you take geomaterial, dissolve it in water, make a solution, let the chemicals or heavy metals which are present in the system leach out in the solution and then you analyze the solution to get uh, the concentration of heavy metals which are present. So, there are two versions of this uh, testing, one is only ICP where you just do qualitative analysis, what are the heavy metals present. There is something known as MS mass spectroscopy. So, mass spectroscopy also tells you the quantity, this qualitative, quantitative analysis. pH is a very important uh, factor as far as the chemical characterization is concerned and I am sure all of you must have used uh, electrodes which I will show you subsequently to determine the pH of the soils or geomaterials. In present day uh, environmental geomechanics, we use gas chromatography, you must have come across this term GCMS. In your environmental sciences courses, I am sure you must have used this. So, when the soils are contaminated with uh, you know organic contaminants, different types of uh, I would say gases or contaminants which are organic in nature, hydrocarbons oil contaminated soils, different type of uh, organic contaminants, contaminated soils and so on. In present day industrial application, this type of analysis is becoming very important. So, we get lot of projects in from the industries where they have to comply with environmental impact analysis EIA. So, for conducting EIA these are the tools and then you have to do a very comprehensive analysis, comprehensive analysis to show that the soils are not containing any contaminants and hence environmental impact of the process which the industry is following is all right. Otherwise you can submit a report to the agencies which are responsible for monitoring the environment and they may serve a notice to close it down. So, this is becoming a very interesting profession and very intriguing. We use sometimes NMR also, nuclear magnetic resonance, you must have studied in your early physics course. This also tells you the type of bonds which are present between the soils and the contaminants and the type of contaminants which you have, uh, they can be obtained with the help of NMR. So, there is something known as FTIR, spectroscopy. This is Fourier transform infrared uh, spectroscopy FTIR. So, these gadgets are uh, very advanced gadgets and uh, they are utilized mostly to establish the bonding which is occurring between the geomaterials and the contaminants, alright. So, the very sensitive issues when we talk about the environmental norms, uh, we can establish with the help of these gadgets. One of the tests which is done to establish the chemical characterization or the potential of the geomaterials, whether they are chemically active or not, would be cation exchange capacity CEC. I will be talking about this. It is a simple test and uh, it tells you quite with accuracy uh, what is the potential of a geomaterial to interact with the, uh, the environment how reactive it would be, how active would be, alright. Pore solution analysis, how the pore solution can be extracted from the soils and this is where I enjoy drawing an analogy between you know blood sampling from human body uh, that uh, you can take out the pore solution and the way you analyze blood to diagnose the disease and remediation of the disease, similar things you can do here once you have the pore solution of the soils and the geomaterials you know what is ailment, what why the soils are ailing and how to treat them, how to diagnose and how to do rectification of the disease. So, these subjects are becoming very advanced and lot of gadgets and uh, many efforts are being made to standardize all these things. Mm -hmm.